In this video, we're going to look at the discrete uniform distribution. If we have n values with equal probabilities, we can say the probability that x is equal to any one of those values is 1 over n. The most commonly used example for the discrete uniform distribution is a fair six-sided die. So let's have a look at the probability distribution of a fair six-sided die. So we might let our random variable x be now the score obtained on the die. So let's go ahead and look at that. So now probability that x is equal to x. So the score obtained 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. If we consider the probabilities, we've got 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6 and then finally 1 over 6. So in this case, n is 6 and we can see the probability for each of these particular values of x is going to be 1 over 6. If we wanted to draw this out, we could graph this and we could look now along at an equal probability. So let's set that probability. That's going to be 1 over 6. And for each of these now, we can just draw a line. So we'd have now for 1, this would be 1 over 6. For 2, we would have 1 over 6. For 3, we'd have exactly the same. Then on the next one, we'd have 4. That would be 1 over 6. We'd have 5, 1 over 6. And then finally now 6. So this is graphing it. And that should really be in a straight line. Hopefully you get the idea. So here now is the probability that x is equal to x. We've got now 1 over 6. And this is for the value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So these are the values of x. Given this uniform distribution, we can quote the following results. The expected value or mean of x is going to be n plus 1 over 2. The variance or var x is going to be now n minus 1 multiplied by n plus 1 over 12. Or if you like, n squared minus 1 over 12. We don't need to derive these, but being able to use and apply them is essential. The first one is fairly intuitive. If we consider in this case now, n is 6. 6 plus 1 over 2 is going to give me 3 and a half. We can see that the mean is 3 and a half by the symmetry. Remember, the mean value doesn't have to appear in our values of x. So from here, we can see now that would be the mean value. The mean value is just now a measure of location. It's looking to find the centre of a data set. So we can say the expected value of x, or e of x, which is the mean, is going to be 6 plus 1 over 2, which is 3.5. This one is slightly less intuitive, but if we simply now plug the value of 6 in, that's going to give me 36 minus 1 over 12. We can say far x is going to be 35 over 12 as an exact fraction. So that's now applying the formula. The proof of both of these is certainly beyond the scope of the course, but using and applying is essential. For these formulae to hold, we need to ensure that we're going from 1 to n. It won't always be the case now that our discrete uniform distribution does go from 1 to n, but we can use linear relationships to simply convert that and work backwards. So let's look at an example of that. Let's define some values of x, and I'll make this fairly straightforward. We're going to take now values of x and then we'll find values of y and we'll just simply apply a linear transformation. So let's say we've got now 4, we've got 8, we've got 12, we've got 16 and we've got now 20. So I've got now 5 of these values. What we could say now is that y is equal to 1 quarter of x or if you like 4y is equal to x. So if we do that, we can now have values of y. So we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now, in terms of y, I have 1 to n. What we can now do is simply use the expectation of y. So the expected value of y. We know that that will be n plus 1 over 2. So in terms of y, we've started at 1, we've finished at n, with n being 5. So we can say that the expected value of y is going to be 5 plus 1 over 2, which is going to give me 3. 
If we look at var y, so we'll have now var y, this is going to give me now n squared minus 1 over 12. So if we go ahead and square this, that's 25. 25 minus 1 over 12, that gives me 2. Let's just go back to our understanding now. We can use this particular result to find the expected value of x. So if we consider now that we have y, and we'll write it just here. In fact, we'll take 4y. We'll say now that 4y is equal to x. We can now go ahead and say the expected value of 4y is equal to the expected value of x. Using the rules we've seen before, we can write this as 4, the expected value of y, is equal to the expected value of x. So to find now the mean of the original, we simply multiply our expectation of y by 4. So we're going to have 4 lots of 3 is going to be equal to the expected value of x. So we can see that that is 12. So the mean of the original data set is going to be 12. And again, you can see that straight now down the middle. So that's where we are. But this shows how it could work for more tricky cases. OK, let's consider now with our uh, variance. So what we've got then is the following. We've got 4y is equal to x. So we can say now var of 4y will be equal to var x. With the variance, we now take this value and square it. We know that var of ax plus b is a squared var x. So what we're going to have is 4 squared var y will be equal to var x. So we've got now 16 multiplied by our 2. That's our variance will be equal to var x. So we can say from here that 32 is equal to var x. So by simply now applying these linear results, we can go ahead and find now the mean and variance of the original data set. Now, quite clearly, again, you could have done this without that. And in later cases, we will look at some slightly more challenging examples. But this just gives you some idea on how you can do that. So there we go. That's a brief introduction now to the discrete uniform distribution. In later videos, we'll work through some exam questions, but hopefully that's given you enough information to start your work on them.